So hello and welcome to this uh, webinar on the topic of the secret to life success. Uh, my name is Sandy and I'm going to be guiding you through some really cool uh, insights tonight, I believe, which really do completely transform our perspective and perception of what success even is. So we can all experience it uh, sooner rather than later. So over the next uh, 45 minutes or so, I'm going to take you through um, where we tend to look for success, why that's not always uh, successful, and give you an alternative uh, viewpoint on uh, how you can uh, discover a, a state of success that you can take, in, take with you throughout your day and how that has a positive impact on what you create in your external circumstances. So without further ado, I've got a slideshow uh, for this uh, session. So I'm going to uh, head over and um, share my screen with you, which should look a bit like that. Make myself bigger for you guys. And this is the Summer of Calm series. And uh, although it's been raining, all day where I am in Spain today, uh, but uh, and cold, uh, but I'm still holding out for some sunshine. I'm sure you guys are too, are, are too if you're tuning in from the UK as well, and things like that, places like that. So like I said, today we're going to be covering the secret to life success, and it makes sense uh, to start by talking about what is success in uh, the first place. Now, I'm just going to get my... Uh, chat up live chat up so i can see any comments that do come in whilst i'm doing this oh i should put this back up da, 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 da. right uh some of you may recognize that okay okay so what is success success it looks like uh different things for different people um but generally when i talk to people about what they want what they, you know what success is for them Often, it, it often starts with the idea of financial wealth um, and you know, having loads and loads of money. And you'll see, if you see a rich person, you may go, oh, they're successful. It's often very much linked uh, with financial wealth or it's linked with you know, career promotions. You know, someone who's worked up the ladder and become a successful in their career. Or if they happen to be an entrepreneur or uh, a company director or whatever, having a successful business is often again one of the uh, external gauges as people go well that person's a success because they've got a successful business or for some others they might explore more um, physical health uh, so some people might perceive it as I can't be successful and if my health isn't good and so they can link uh, success to health others the most obvious things are like a big house fancy car uh, luxury holidays expensive clothes and I'm sure you could add a few things to this list as well. In fact, if you can, please do write in the box. I'd be curious what you perceive as a successful life. If it's not on that list, I'd be really fascinated to see. Uh, if you have any ideas, uh, type them in the chat box and let me know. Um, although these are all wonderful things, they don't tend to lead to a successful life. If someone said happiness, that's a great, great point. And I'm going to come back to that as we go through uh, this. I think um, we're, we're going to be on the same page uh, largely uh, later on when we explore this further. So when we're exploring, exploring and wanting to feel peace, uh, successful and have a successful life, these are often the things that we're working very hard uh, in trying to uh, create for ourselves so that we can you know, get this uh, external success. Success is often a search for many different people and in the search for success, in the search for what we truly want, um, we can often look for it in many different places. Now, very often when I'm uh, working with my clients or doing my workshops or whatever, I'll start with a question, you know, if you had a magic wand and you could have, any, you could have any one thing, what would you ask for? And often um, I hear answers like peace, happiness, love, contentment. And these are really beautiful uh, things uh, to want. And I think it's very natural for us uh, to want these things. Furthermore, I believe that successful life includes knowing 
who you really are. You know, one of the most biggest, most common questions humanity asks is, who am I? And whether we are, are aware of it or not, we're very uh, often in the pursuit to trying to define who we are, to try and figure that big answer out. You know, we were just dropped into this uh, planet and suddenly, you know, for the rest of our life, we're, you know, as we become more conscious uh, and grow into teenage years and so on, we start trying to think, who am I? What's this all about? Uh, what I observed is it doesn't matter how much uh, possessions or uh, prestige we gather in the external world, it doesn't relieve that eternal itch that there must be more to life than this. Have you ever asked yourself that question? Oh, you know, there must be more to life than this. It's a very common question to ask. And in the search for finding the answer of who am I, and the search to uh, find uh, happiness, peace, love, contentment, joy, uh, oneness, or whatever, these common things that people want when you ask them what they really, really want, um, we often start looking for it in these different places. Our thoughts, emotions, body, career, relationships, money, home and uh, hobbies. Can you relate to that? So let's go through these just briefly individually so you can see why maybe if you've been pursuing uh, success and trying to gain it from these life areas, it might not, uh, let's, say, let's explain why it might not have been uh, successful uh, for you. So our thoughts are um, temporary. They're coming and going. How many thoughts would you say you've had today? 20? 100? 300, 1,000, 4,000? How many thoughts would you say you've had uh, today? If you've had more than one thought, it means your thoughts are temporary. And so if you're trying to find out, you know, who you are and have like permanent peace in a landscape that's constantly changing that isn't permanent, then it can be really tricky to experience that permanent peace from the surface of your mind if you're trying to get it from your thoughts. And not only that, but thoughts are often, um, well, they just gen they just aren't as fulfilling. Uh, it's, a, it's just a thought compared to something that's much deeper that we're gonna go on to uh, later in this session. And the place people look to explore who, are, who they are and define who they are and to experience happiness, peace, love, joy, contentment, all the rest of it. Another place people tend to look is their emotions. Now again, how many emotions have you had today? Or how many emotions have you had this week? We all know that emotions are temporary. They're coming and going. And again, if you're looking to try to uh, have permanent peace and ongoing joy, uh, unconditional, uh, relentless uh, love, and so on and so forth, if you're looking for these uh, in your emotions, then you may end up frustrated because you have emotions, but you are not your emotions. We've covered this in a previous uh, webinar. Not finding our peace, happiness, love, joy, contentment in our temporary thoughts and temporary emotions that are up and, up, up, up and down, left and right, positive and negative, and all the rest of it, we tend to uh, often look to try to find it in our body. I uh, believe that I have to have the perfect body um, in order to experience uh, success. Now, when I was growing up, uh, anytime my mum was having a bad day, she'd often, uh, I'd, what I'd hear coming out of her mouth, if she was like upset, is, oh, if I was just a size 12 again. And I'd be like, oh, so I was learning, you know, growing up, oh, she, you know, she's not happy. Oh, it's because her body. And so I was learning through the back door very subtly. I was picking up conditioning and beliefs and forming conclusions about, you know, for me to be happy, my body has to be a certain way. Well, when I hit my teenage years, I wasn't very happy. And I thought, oh, it's my body. And so I started going and pumping lots of iron and I get all pumped up. And it might be hard to imagine now, but I was all pumped up. And I look at the front of the mirror, but I'm not happy yet. I'm not experiencing fulfillment and peace yet. And I think, oh, it's because my body's not the right color. So I start doing sunbeds, trying to change the color of my skin to be like a toasted color of ready brown. And I look in the front of the mirror and it's like, oh, I don't feel it yet. I don't feel successful. I don't feel happy yet. And, um, and then I start buying lots of clothes in order to try to, um, it, and it literally went from my body out one level to, to my clothes and then out to the world. I was trying to do lots of other things. A lot of people meet, I meet that are struggling with physical stuff, they believe they can't be happy, experience peace or freedom until they've fixed or healed their physical body. That's not true. Um, your body is also temporary. It's changing, it's adapting, it's um, cells are being reborn, cells are decaying and dying uh, all the time. 
Um, you don't literally have the same physical body as you did five years ago. You've had many bodies in this lifetime. Uh, and if you're looking for permanent peace, it's not wise to look for it in a physical, temporary uh, ex object in a way, because um, it's, it's not permanent. Um, so if we don't look, find our happiness, peace, love, and joy and contentment, you don't find, you know, we don't find the definition and discover who we really are in our thoughts and emotions, our body, like I said, we tend to start going outward and start looking for it in our career, relationships, money, home, and hobbies. Now, career. Have you ever been to a party and someone's introduced themselves as their career? Maybe you've done it yourself. But have you ever been to a party and someone's walked up and said, hi, how are you doing? Uh, architect. And you're like, oh, cool. Thanks for telling me what you do today. I don't, that's not who you are. I don't know who you are. Um, but thanks for telling me what you do. The funny thing with career, we can very much become identified with it and believe that's who we are. I am a nurse. I am an architect. I am a life coach. I am an author or whatever. And when your identity becomes uh, identified into uh, what you do, then uh, you can create lots of uh, conflict and it also it creates a false idea of who you are. The name and job title on your business card can change. Therefore, if it can change, it's not ultimately you and it's also not ultimately permanent. But so if we're looking to get our, our a sense of success and our happiness, love, joy, contentment and all the rest of it from our career, again, it might not be a successful strategy and an effective strategy. Again, another place people look is is in their emotion, in their relationships, looking for the other half, their soulmate. They can't be happy unless their partner's happy. They can't be happy unless they have a partner. They can't be happy until their current partner is divorced or whatever. It's not true. Emotions are temporary. They come and they go, not in a bad way, not being negative. It's just the nature of, of, of our reality. And so if we're looking to find it in the external, again, in relationships, it may not be effective. You are complete, you're whole already. You don't need to be completed by some external person. And so again, what I'm gonna share with you later on is how you can be complete now, and from that completeness, live fully and love uh, freely. I mentioned right at the beginning of this webinar that money is a very common uh, place people search for success. Again, not uh, necessarily an effective strategy. Money constantly comes and goes. It's the, the financial markets uh, are constantly fluctuating. Currency valuations are constantly fluctuating. Um, if we define ourselves uh, as an external thing like money, again, uh, we discover the well-known phrase, almost a cliche now, that money doesn't make you happy. But have you really taken on board that? Do you really know that actually your happiness isn't later when you have more money, you can buy more stuff or whatever? If we don't find it in the money, often we find it, try to look for it in the home or we're trying to find it all these different places as well as, as money. You know, I used to visit my parents' house and again, there'd be like piles and piles of women and home magazines all over the place. <laughs> and the, the, it basically went from one room and redecorating each room in the house. It was like the fourth road bridge in Scotland. You know, they, they paint it one way and they have to start painting the other way because it's, it's um, already needing redone. And so, if we're constantly trying to define, like, I'm the sort of person who lives in this house, um, often people are trying to define themselves by the house they live in, the furniture they have, the, the address, the postcode, or whatever. Again, homes come and go, they change, and we don't have complete uh, control over what happens within them. Pipes burst, all the rest of it. And finally, hobbies. So you get the idea, guys, that in the search for success, the search to know who we are, the search for happiness, peace, love, joy, entertainment, freedom, the, would you agree, guys, that these are the, some of the most common places people look to try to attain it? Give me a yes if you're watching live, um, or no, if you don't agree, let me know why. But do you see that these are pretty much the most common places people tend to look if they're trying to uh, find uh, what I've been talking about for the last little while? We have a couple of yes, I agree. Is anybody else out there? <laughs> yes, anyone else watching? Um, It'd be good to know that you're here and engaged. Yeah, we've got a few, much more people uh, talking to me now. Thank you very much, guys. It's nice. I remember I'm just sitting in a room talking to a screen, so it's always lovely to gain some uh, feedback uh, as if we are in a room uh, together. So 
One of the main issues about uh, the things about the line um, is that they are largely out of our control. Um, they are largely out of our control. Um, our thoughts, emotions, body, career relationships, you know, uh, and let me go through that. You know, I've meditated for thousands of hours, and although I can intentionally think something, um, many of my thoughts on a daily basis are just kind of passing on through. They're just happening, um, and not, often not predictable. Uh, and it's not a failure to be that way. It's actually, if you've done a lot of meditation, you'll see that actually thoughts are just happening. They're pretty random. Uh, they're often triggered from some sort of external stimulus or whatever. But the reality is, um, if you've tried to master positive thinking, how have you done? Uh, the average person, they say, has more than a thought a second, um, on a, just as, a, as the mind is ticking over. Uh, some people say it's up to 100, 120,000 thoughts a day, depending on which research you look at. We have a lot of thoughts. Um, we're not controlling all, all of them, I can assure you. And if we're trying to only think positively, then we're constantly looking at the past to see, oh, what did I think about? What's negative? Let's try and think positively. And I just don't have time for that. I don't know about you, but I've got better things to do with my day. And so the reason we have a massive positive thinking is because a lot of our thoughts aren't actually uh, within our control. And that's not being negative. I've done a lot of research into this. Um, our emotions, again, um, can be reactive, uh, conditioned responses, and all the rest of it. And just, just the energy that's just uh, needing to be there. It's rising up within us. Um, and... Although there's lots of talk out there in the personal development world, the self-help industry about you know mastering your emotions and only feeling positive, I haven't yet met a single person who has actually done that. Um, and so the, the, the stats would suggest that again, although it sounds good in a self-help book, um, the reality might be different. When it comes to the body, sometimes the body just does stuff. You know, earlier this year when I was in Mexico, I got a kidney stone out of nowhere. I didn't know I had any symptoms, didn't, didn't do anything necessarily that would necessarily create that for myself. Um, the body does its thing. Okay, sometimes your body feels really tired. Sometimes your body feels really awake and alert. You know, the body is doing its thing to a certain extent. Yes, there's stuff we can do to help it and not hinder it uh, doing its job. But hopefully, you're seeing that not necessarily 100% control over it. Careers, some uh, markets can change. Tastes and preferences can change. Uh, job uh, business strategies can change. We just, we don't know when it comes to that either. Relationships, well, we all know that some out there can decide they don't like you. <laughs> um, and you can do your best, but you can't necessarily control what someone else thinks about you. Um, money, fluctuations, uh, financial markets, evaluations of the currency, all the rest of it. I'm not trying to be negative here. I'm trying to show you that we don't have necessarily 100% control over these. And so I wouldn't want to rely on them in order for me to experience peace, happiness, love, joy, contentment, freedom, or whatever. Otherwise, I'll be continually dependent and a victim to uh, circumstances. Uh, someone says, what about beliefs? Um, again, uh, we can do things about our beliefs, but there's many uh, beliefs. And I like to show uh, and share a way today which helps you to go beyond your beliefs altogether. So instead of having to do a huge amount of work to try to change your beliefs uh, that you discover are negative, although it is useful, highly useful in certain circumstances, I would say I wouldn't want to spend my whole life just trying to change my beliefs and have a perfect belief system by the time I leave this physical body. I've got other things to do uh, with my time. Uh, so it's not all bad news. It's actually very good news. Uh, if you've stuck with me so far, um, you'll be rewarded very, very soon because there is one thing we do have control over. Well, let me rephrase that. There's one thing in life that we can cultivate control over. And I generally mean one thing. <laughs> Um, I know that I'm very careful not to generalize, but it really appears to be this way. There's one thing that we can cultivate control over. Do you want to know what it is? Anybody? <laughs> Do you want to know where it is? And it's very simple, and please stay attentive and interested when I tell you the answer. But there's one thing that we can cultivate attention, oh, sorry, control over, which is our attention. Did I give it away? Attention. Where we place our attention in any given moment is something that we can cultivate control over. Now, in the beginning, we might not be able to because our attention uh, is a bit scattered and we haven't actually done much work to uh, strengthen our attention muscle. But I'll come on to how to strengthen that in a bit. But initially, I want you to know that there is one thing you can cultivate control over, and that's where you put your attention. The second 
thing, the, the, the most obvious question that comes from this recognition is, well, if the attention is the one thing I can cultivate control over, then the big question is, where do I want to place my attention? And where can I place my attention so I experience the most happiness, peace, love, joy, contentment, oneness, freedom, and a sense of success in my life? Where can I place my attention so I can experience that? And I'm going to suggest that you uh, want to rediscover uh, the aspect of yourself uh, that is infinite, the aspect of yourself uh, that many, many species have talked about over a very, very long time. And um, the goal of what I'm going to share with you from the net, for the rest of this uh, webinar is to explain what exactly I mean by this little infinity symbol, like what it is, so you have a very clear roadmap of what you want to do if you really want to stop waiting to feel successful, waiting to be happy, and you want to experience happiness, peace, love now. If you're tired of waiting, you're listening uh, to the correct uh, webinar, you're watching the right uh, webinar, because I generally believe that through what I've been taught and discovered along the way, I've found a genuine way where you can experience uh, these things in your life, not later, but now. So in order to describe this to you, in order to tell you and show you what the infinity symbol is, then I'm going to share with you um, my content context model. My content context model. This showed up originally in my uh, Mind Calm uh, best-selling book uh, by Hay House. If, you, if you're enjoying this webinar, you probably want to read that book if you haven't already. Um, then I adapted it a little bit for the Body Calm. Uh, book, uh, applying it more to the context of physical health and healing. Uh, but it's a really, really uh, simple way for you to understand where you want to place your attention so that you can experience the greatest level of success, not later, but now. So let me talk you through the content context model. It, its beauty is its simplicity. And we're going to use where we currently are uh, right now, uh, because I'm going to tell you a million times if you stick around um, that what you want exists right here, right now. So that means it's existing right where you are, right here, right now, in your home or where you happen to be watching uh, this webinar. What you want exists right here, right now, right where you are, uh, right now. So what is the content context? Well, right here, right now, if you look around uh, the space where you're at, you notice there's some stuff. Um, that stuff, like you've got, I've got some shoes here, and. Uh, mobile phone and a light and a candle over there. And the technical term I use for that is stuff, stuff. Now keep up, this is very technical, okay? Now the context of that is space. This space around my phone over there, the space around the shoes, the space around the candle, the space around the light. In fact, there's much more space than stuff. And the more important thing is as well is that not only is there much more of it, but it's permanent. The stuff's going to come and go. These shoes aren't going to be here forever. This, the, the phone's going to leave the room. Um, the candle's going to burn out or whatever. Yeah, the light's going to be somewhere else at some point. But the space in which the stuff inhabits is permanent and unchanging. Okay? Bear with me. We're going somewhere with this. You'll see here the voice, uh, my voice right now. There may be other sounds going on in your locality. Maybe people talking nearby or the trees blowing outside or the wind on the, the rain on the roof or whatever. So these are all sounds and these sounds, the content of these sounds are existing within the context of silence. Now I used to think it was either noisy or quiet, but the reality is for there to be any sound, there has to be the context of silence. Um, if you went to a, a, a loud rock concert and it was really, really loud, you're so loud, your ears are going to ting the next day, there's still silence. For you to be able to hear the um, music, there has to be the contrast of silence. That enables you to hear the sound. Uh, so silence is permanent and it's within you. And then you've got the external stuff, sorry, the external sounds uh, coming uh, and vibrations coming through the uh, ethers to make your inner ears vibrate and so on and so forth. So sound and silence. Again, silence is permanent, uh, sound comes and goes. And finally, we've got the movement. My face is moving right now. Uh, your chest is moving as you breathe. Maybe you've turned your neck recently, so your head's moving, your hands are moving. 
many aspects uh, of external life is apparently moving. Um, but the context of all that movement, you can see it on the screen and you probably guessed it by now, if you hadn't seen it yet, is stillness, stillness. Now, why have I just given you a stop tour of reality? Because the reality is your, um, I'm not, it, you may just raise your hands. Um, please do write a message if you want to say something. I'm not going to do any one-on-one um, -on -one chatting in, during this webinar, but to write a little message if you want to. Oh, it was a mistake. Cool. <laughs> write a message if you want. I'd love to hear from you if you have any questions about this, or if this is making sense for you. Um, so in the last few moments, I've talked you through the content context, or at least the start of the content content model content context model. Um, in summary, we discovered that reality, like this moment, is made up of two main things. Um, this content and the context. And within the content, we've got the stuff, sound, and movement. And in the context, we've got still sound space. Here's the big question. Now I've worked with some billionaires, and so this is a billion dollar question, okay? Where would you say you have most of your attention most of your day? Where would you say you have most of your attention and most of your day? on the content or the context. The content, i.e. the stuff above the line, all this stuff, your thoughts, emotions, body, relationships, home, money, that, that, or the context, which is below the surface of thinking. Where would you say you tend to have most of your attention most of your day? Now, if, you haven't been a, if you're not a member of the CAM clan yet, and you're not um, using the meditations that I share, there's a high chance you've probably had most of your attention most of your day on the content, not the context. The journey that I'm inviting you to take with me is to, yes, have everything you want in the external physical reality. Um, have all the stuff, sign and movement that you want, but don't do it with zero attention on the context. Because what we're gonna discover in the final part of this webinar is that if you have uh, rediscover the context and start putting your attention on it, well, magical things happen and you get to experience an instant calm, an instant contentment, a massive sense of fulfillment, um, much more love, and essentially uh, you get to live a truly successful life because that sense that there must be more to life than this, it disappears, and you feel uh, fulfilled, and you are living fully. Uh, you're not missing a huge aspect of yourself, and you're not missing a huge aspect of reality itself. So this is very, very important. I'm, I've made it my life's mission to make sure as many people know this as possible because uh, people, many people have gone through the entire life with all their attention jumping around on the content, the surface of the ocean, and they never dive deeper to discover what really exists uh, beyond all that surface level movement, sound, and stuff. So let's dive in deeper to experience and to explore the secret to success. Uh, and to do this, I want to uh, take you further into the content context model. So to do this, um, I would like to ask you a few questions uh, so that you can really uh, recognize this, not just from me teaching you it, uh, telling you it, but actually you recognizing your, in your own experience, you know what, this is actually appears to be the case. This, this is pretty accurate. Uh, so I'd like to ask you, you know, where would you, what, where would you say the mind exists, the mind? in the content or the context? Uh, the content or the context? Where, do, where, do, where does the mind exist? Now the reason I'm wanting to ask this question is because, for example, mind calm, we're looking to explore a getting a calm mind, uh, or want to be able to use the mind as an amazing tool. Uh, where we say the mind exists? Now we've got some answers coming in, and I'm really delighted to say that they're all right. Uh, the mind exists on the content side of the ca uh, content context formula or you know model. Um, how do you know that? Because there's something that's the mind is coming and going. The mind is temporary, but there's something that's aware of the mind. If you've uh, read Mind Calm, then you'll know that I start that book with a question of how do you know you have a mind, and then I quickly answer it by saying you know you have a mind because you are aware of it. So by that rationale. You have a mind and you're supposed to be aware of your mind. And mind calm and all the calm stuff that I share is becoming, becoming much more interested in the awareness that's aware of the mind as opposed to just having all your attention on the ever-changing um, thoughts and all that sort of stuff um, that are coming and going. So there you go. The first part of the content context model expanded 
is uh, on the, we've got the mind and the content side and we've got conscious awareness uh, as the context of the mind. Is this clear? Do you understand why the awareness is on that side? It's because the awareness is permanent and unchanging and that's what's aware of the mind. You know you have a mind because you are aware of it. And that awareness is always there even, though the, even when you're not having thoughts, even when you're not thinking. It's the permanent aspect uh, of you. Okay. Where would you say time exists? The bigger question, where would you say time exists? Would you say time exists on the content side or the context side? Where would you say uh, time exists? Time, the past and the future. Where would you say time exists? The past and the future, where would you say that exists? Well, the answer is it exists on the content. Um, it exists on the content. Why do we know that? Well, because how would you access earlier or later via the mind and using your imagination and memories? And so um, the past and future are a collection of thoughts, um, thought-based memories, thought-based uh, imaginations. Um, and all the time that time appears to be happening, the present moment is right here, right now. It's the context of uh, time. Without the present moment, there would be no context of for time. And so we've already quickly seen that on one side we've got mind, uh, all the thoughts and thinking and stuff, and time, all the past and future. And in the context, we've got awareness and the present moment. The present moment. Okay. Now, when the mind and time get together, they have a field time. They have a field day. And um, often they, what they'll start doing is they start comparing, contrasting, and judging. They start judging. These two uh, love to get together and judge stuff. Compare stuff to earlier, judge it to how it should be later or whatever. So judgment often shows up uh, after that. Uh, when these two guys, uh, when all our attention is on mind and time, the next thing is to engage in some sort of judgment. Now, the judgment game I talk about a lot in Mind Calm, I'll be talking about it in, in, in the online uh, retreat that's coming up. and. Uh, and it's in the Mind Calm book, I think I mentioned that already. I don't want to talk about it a lot tonight because we only have a certain amount of time, ironically. Uh, but the judgment is basically where we're deciding whether something is good or bad, right, wrong, better, worse, positive or negative. And we're putting life into a box. So if it's good, bad, right, wrong, better, worse, positive, negative. Now, if we end up um, doing that, we are no longer, we're, we're, these boxes that are bringing life in, of good, bad, right, or wrong, are mind-based boxes. And they are based upon criteria and um, conditions and, um, yeah, conditioning. So if we're not uh, looking at life and looking at ourselves and other people through the lens of judgment, if we're not um, identifying with the judgment, if life isn't good or bad, right, wrong, better, worse, positive, negative, then it just is. It just is. And the context of judgment is a delicious, uh, delightful isness for life, with life. And void of judgment, we naturally experience love. Um, Judgment is essentially what talks us out of loving ourselves, other people in life now. This, we made some sort of negative judgment. It's bad, wrong, worse, or negative. It's not good enough. Um, but when we rise above the content and experience and engage the context, we discover there's much more love there naturally now. I don't know about you, but would, you, would it be okay if you experienced more love in your life? I mean, you might already be happy in relationships and stuff, but there's always room for more, right? Uh, so love, I don't know anyone who wouldn't want, would like, no, I don't want more love. I've got way too much love. I've hit my quota for love. I just don't want any more of it. <laughs> that doesn't seem to happen. Um, love is a wonderful thing. It's, it's what most of the movies the last hundred years have been about or whatever. Um, and so uh, I don't know anyone that doesn't want more love. And you can have it if you want to rediscover and put your attention upon the context of life. When we judge something as bad, wrong, worse, or negative, well, that's basically the definition of a problem. A problem is something that's bad, wrong, worse, or negative. And if we are going around our life and we feel like this is one problem, one challenge after the next, um, then we're missing out on the context. 
the context of problems is, ab is absolute perfection. Would it be nice if you engaged life from an inner state and inner experience of perfection, irrespective of what's going on in your life? Would that be a nice thing to do? You know, I wouldn't, you know, the stuff happens in my day that if I was to judge, I wouldn't like. But because I've discovered the context, although life might not show up how I want, it doesn't stop me experiencing inner state perfection as life is showing up how it's, how it's showing up. And that's a wonderful way to live. It's, it's literally living in nirvana, but we'll come back to that later uh, if you guys are up for it. Oh, someone says, it's not perfe is, is perfection not a judgment? No. I know it's a really good question, Jeanette, but in this context, <laughs> perfection is not a judgment. It's a direct experience. It's an experience that there's nothing wrong. It's an experience that, um, it's, it's like I say, it's a, it's, it's a delicious experience of isness. And, 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 the, and the direct living experience, there's nothing wrong with myself. There's ultimately nothing wrong with others. And there's ultimately nothing wrong with life and the world. It's a, it's a wonderful um, state to experience. And, and it's one that is the foundation that brings about healing in yourself, healing in others and healing in the world. And so if you want to bring uh, through us um, and be uh, agents of positive uh, influence and change in the world, then actually it, it, doesn't, it doesn't come from us perceiving the world as wrong, it comes from us perceiving, experiencing uh, perfection and love, and from that space we become master manifestors and we have a ripple effect through uh, all time and space. I'm glad you understood. Thank you very much, Jeanette. Usually when the mind has judged something, as a problem, it then naturally and through a habit wants to resist it and push it away. And if you've read uh, Body Calm or more recently my Calm Cure book, um, Calm Cure goes a lot more into it. Um, I talk about how resistance in, is one of the main reasons why our, we get stuck in life and we suffer and get and experience harmful forms of stress. Um, Resistance creates tension, it's pushing away, it's not welcoming the moment, it's not welcoming uh, what's happening. And we miss out on all the lessons, we miss out on all the opportunities to grow and expand and wake up. However, the context of resistance is, again, is harmony. It's not, and all the, I know this appears to be the opposites. It's not the opposites, it's the context. The context of resistance is an ongoing uh, harmony. What you'll discover is the more you experience harmony with yourself, harmony with others, and harmony with life, um, your happiness skyrockets. Uh, the more you're in disharmony, uh, in other words, conflict and resistance with what is, uh, with yourself, other people in life, uh, the more suffering and stress and negative emotions you end up experiencing. And so, we're, we're really, this is a formula that I'm sharing with you tonight that is massive to know and epically huge to actually directly experience. And that's my invitation to you uh, by doing the, this webinar for you today. I want you to experience the context for yourself. When we're resisting, we are creating tension and we generate harmful forms of uh, stress. Um, however, the context of that stress is just this ongoing state of uh, spacious, uh, still, silent serenity. And so I don't know what you'd want, uh, but I definitely would much rather have serenity than um, just unhealthy uh, stress that speeds up aging and knackers your body and uh, just doesn't make for a very enjoyable life experience. When we're experiencing all of this, one of the common byproducts of it, the common symptoms of all of this is frustration. Uh, we're, we often end up feeling frustrated because of all this other stuff going on. Now, often at that point, the mind will want to uh, point the finger outward and say I'm frustrated because of what's happening in my career. I'm frustrated because um, they're not, the delivery's not shown up or whatever. But the reality is you're not frustrated because of that. You're frustrated because of all the above I've just mentioned. You're frustrated because you're all your attention's on their mind and in the past and future, and you've identified and caught up in judgments, and you believe that it's a problem that your bags haven't shown up or whatever, and you're resisting that fact, and that's making you stressed, 
And so frustration is just a symptom of all the rest. Isn't that amazing? Can you, can you get this? Can you see how this works in reality? It's hap can you see how that's ha been happening in your life, but behind the scenes? This is about bringing it up to the forefront so you can go, ah, and you have the ability to make a choice, make a choice. The context of frustration is, again, there's this fullness. So I'm calling it fulfillment, but it's like a fullness. Still silent spaciousness, which is the context, um, is huge. It's infinite. It's still expanding. There's no edge to it. There's no end to it. And the more you place your attention on it, the more attention you place upon it, the more you're filled up by it. And you discover nothing is lacking within you. Nothing is lacking. How amazing is that? There's nothing lacking. And that's what all the great spiritual teachers have been saying and referring to when they say that you're perfect, whole, and complete. It's a nice affirmation. We hear it all the time. It's hard to convince the mind of that because of the mind's linked and caught up in time, judgment, and all the rest of it. But when you come back to the context, you discover that you are perfect whole and complete, the still sound spaciousness, which is the permanent unchanging aspect of yourself, which is who you ultimately are, doesn't break, doesn't go faulty, doesn't have a bad day. And it's infinite, truly, truly infinite, hence the infinity symbol that I introduced to you earlier in this webinar. And we talked, sorry, all about, we started this session all talking about success. So it makes sense to pop the success in here. So how does how is success the context of failure? Well, <clears throat> because we've judged something and there's a we feel it's a problem and there's resistance and stress and frustration, there's like it can be a nagging sense is much more to life than this. I'm doing something wrong. Uh, I, 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 I I'm feeling at this thing called life. This feeling feeling of being human or whatever, and. Um, The reality is this, the secret to success is silence. The secret to success is stillness. The secret to success is discovering the context. Look at that list, guys. Look at the context. Awareness, present, love, perfection, harmony, serenity, um, fulfillment, success. Look at that list. Would you define that as a pretty successful life? If you were living with fulfillment and serenity and har inner harmony and love and a sense of life, like a perfection, and, um, and you know, I, I think you might. Um, Jean's just said, wow, this is life changing. Thanks, Andy. Um, Jeanette says, could not failure be a lesson? And um, so, again, failure could be feedback. A uh, sense that you're failing at something, I would say, is less of a lesson, but more of a feedback. The feedback would be to say that you've put your attention on the content. You've been completely caught up in the tent. If you're ever feeling like a failure, ever experiencing frustration, feeling uh, really super stressed, you got, believe you got a problem after the next, what that really ultimately is, if you want to let me, let me simplify life totally down for you so you can actually enjoy it, um, is... is It's just feedback. All these things are just feedback that your attention slipped off the context onto the content. Now, if you don't know the context, you'll feel that you need to learn a million lessons before you can be happy, um, all, the rest of, all the rest of it. But what I'm offering you is to return to the present moment, return to your birthright, which is your natural state of peace, love, and joy. Now, if people go, well, that's way too positive, this is positive thinking, blah, blah. No, when you strip away all the stuff that you're not, what's left is peace, love, and joy. I'm sorry to say this annoys you, but it's true. I'm having, um, when you aren't all caught up in all the rest of it, what's left is there's no reason uh, not to be happy. Um, there's no reason not to love. And because your attention is on that which is still silent and uh, still, still silent and spacious, sorry, um, you feel, you experience what that's like. And still silent presence is, that presence of still silent spaciousness is calm. Oh, let me just uh, quieten that phone there. Um, 
still silent presence is calm. So peace, love, and joy is the natural byproduct. I'm sorry if it's annoying you watching this and you're going, no, you don't know my life, but you might not, I'll tell you, you might not know what life is like with all your attention uh, on the context. And until you do that, I would strongly urge you not to reject what is on offer here. Um, I'm, not, I'm not saying this to you guys, I mean, you guys are here, but I'm, not, I'm gonna put this up to be uh, on, on, like, on YouTube or whatever eventually. And so if you're watching this and you're like, how dare he say people life is just peace, love, and joy, it's so ignorant. Well, prove me wrong. Rediscover the context of still silent spaciousness. Cultivate the ability to have your attention upon it on an ongoing basis and see what happens. See if you still want to reject this, see if you still want to fight, or if you actually discover that this is true. And this is what all the great sports teachers have been saying for a long, long time. Um, I'm just trying to put it into a context which we can understand and we can see the clear choice that we have to make on a moment to moment basis. Um, and it's a very clear cut choice. The final part of the content context model I want to share with you is control and freedom. Control and freedom. Now, when our life doesn't appear to be going how we want and we're feeling frustrated and stressed and we've got problems and all the rest of it, the natural uh, reflex, the conditioned response to that is to, to start to become quite controlling. Um, nobody would necessarily want to accept uh, that they are control freaks, but a lot of people are and they get freaked out if what they're trying to control and all their stuff that they think they believe they need in order to be happy and safe and secure and all that sort of stuff, you start taking that away or threatening it, they can get very violent, they can get very controlled. Um, it's not like they're, they're like a bad person, it's just they, are tr they believe that their happiness, peace, security, survival is dependent upon um, their uh, physical health, their relationships, their career, their money. They're looking above the surface of the line and because that, that's the only place they're looking to find it, um, they need to control all that stuff so it looks exactly how they think it needs to be for them to be happy, free, content, uh, secure, or whatever. However, when you start to discover and put more and more attention on the context, you, you naturally uh, become more free. Freedom is the willingness to experience anything that shows up and freedom is the opposite of control. Or said another way, control is the opposite of freedom. I know I said opposite there. It's the context, but I'm trying to put it into context uh, for you to really get what I'm trying to say here. The more you need to control for you to be okay, the less free you are. The more you are okay, peaceful, experiencing love and happiness, irrespective of what's going on in your external circumstances or your physical body, the more free you are. Can you see that formula there? Um, the more you need to, everything's be okay for you to be, everything exactly how you think it should be for you to be okay, um, the less free you are. You're a victim of circumstance and you're running around chasing your tail trying to make sure life is how you think it needs to be. And all that is, is to be, you've been conditioned to believe you need to have that be a certain way. The reality is that if you place your attention back on the context, you are experiencing love, perfection, fulfillment, serenity, success, um, irrespective. And that, from that solid foundation, naturally you can let go, naturally you can surrender, naturally you can accept life more. And you discover that you don't need to run around trying to control everything, every orifice of existence in order for you to be okay, you're actually okay now. And life becomes uh, more of a game and the world, the playground. Um, and it becomes much more of an adventure and, oh, what's around here? And, oh, oh that's just showing up. And, and how, do I, how can I respond to this and all the rest of it? So this is uh, a very powerful uh, model, um, the content context. And I hope that you can see the choice that you have. Well, I'll rephrase that. The choice you can have. I'm not trying to be negative, but until we have um, strengthened our attention muscle, which is the one thing you have control over, um, in order to um, have it upon, without effort, um, the context of life, the context of yourself, the still sound spacious uh, presence within yourself. Until you've done that, you don't actually have the choice. And we just tend to hang out in the content all the time. My passion and my purpose is to help you 
to rediscover the context and put your attention upon it and um, me to help you over the hurdles that, you sh that show up along the way as you go about doing that. And to reassure you, you're doing great and to help you keep going uh, so that you really experience it on a much more ongoing basis. And so there's a choice, guys. Do you want to live your life in your mind, in the past and future, uh, in judgment? Don't worry, sometimes you have positive judgment. So in the content, you'll still have a nice day occasionally. Um, what uh, do you want to uh, live in resistance and stress and frustration and feel like there must be more to life than this and never quite get there and have to control lots of stuff? Or would you like to live with awareness, uh, show up where life is happening in the present moment and experience love and serenity and uh, much more success and freedom. That is a choice that we can cultivate the ability to make. I've got a great question here. But what about if you are about to be homeless or don't have food? Well, first of all, is that your current experience? Because what I always recommend people do is um, only work on stuff that's happening in their own life. Uh, because that's why it's happening in your life. Your life, the way it's showing up, is to uh, is, is is your your path, and so it can be quite a major distraction if we're looking at like people's path to go. But what about this? But what about that? If it's not happening in your life right now, I would focus on on being able to do this within the context of your life. But that's not me trying to avoid the question. So I will answer this question, but I just want to make sure um, if someone says, you know, but what if you're coming come homeless and not food? Well, if that's a hypothetical, if that's actually what's happening in reality. If it's happening in your reality, then I would still invite you to do this because for so many reasons. If that is the reality, then you can still not suffer in the face of that reality or, or experience a huge amount of stress in the face of that potential reality. Now, if you're not suffering and if you're not stressed and if you're not caught up in the mind and worry and anxiety and stuff, you're actually much better placed, you're in a much better state to be able to not be homeless and to be able to uh, gain access to food, however that may happen. And so it still pays to be aware of the context because it puts you in a much better state to be able to do what it takes in the external world to turn about uh, better things, bring about better external things. None of this says that you shouldn't have a nice house and you shouldn't try to have a nice food and you shouldn't try to have nice clothes and go on nice holidays and stuff like that. I'm not saying, we're here to live 200% of life. And by 200% of life, I mean 100% above the line, you know, like I said, all the relationships and career and money and that sort of stuff, but also 100% below the line, the internal subjective experience of life. So hopefully that kind of answers your question, um, is that it's still beneficial. I'm not saying it's either or, it's both, okay? But if we're just only got, uh, got the content, um, it's harder to improve life and it's harder to uh, be, see and be aware of opportunities to uh, make more money or whatever because we're, we're, we can be very quite narrow. Uh, but this, open up the context, it opens us up to abundance, opens up to life helping us, recognizing that life has our back and being willing to accept uh, help if we really do uh, are struggling when it comes to homes and food. I hope that is an answer that makes sense for you and that uh, it's helped you at this point. Okay, guys. So I'm offering you a new definition of success and I'm offering you a new way to experience it. It's kind of funny that I'm called New Beginning, but there you go. What new beginning do you want? Well, I hope you want uh, to explore and embrace this new definition for success and this new way. Um, I believe a successful life is one that is loved by the person living it. So that would be my definition of success. Are you loving uh, your life? And um, is it a permanent ongoing sense of love and fulfillment and awe and excitement? Um, and not because of just the external content, but just this inner wellspring of awe. Is that your experience of life? Um, that's the invitation. A successful life is one that is loved by the person living it. And I invite you to make your definition that. Why? Because it's not dependent on how fancy your car is. It's not dependent on how big your house is. 
It's not dependent on how much money you have or how many people love you, how much prestige you have or your position in society. It's not about your physical health. It's about attitude and attention and where you have your attention. Are you aware of just the content or the context? And so the successful life is one that is loved by the person living it. And the way I'm suggesting you can do that is to know the still, silent, spacious self, capital S. Capital S because it's a permanent, sacred, unchanging aspect of yourself. When you know the still, silent, spacious self, the aspect of yourself that is still silent and spacious, the context of all the temporary other stuff, you naturally love yourself. You naturally are able to love others much better and you're naturally able to love life. And you experience much more calm, uh, contentment, and fulfillment. It might sound all too good to be true, but don't, re- don't forget that that's your mind saying that. And your mind is in the content. It doesn't have a clue about the context. It just doesn't exist in that realm. So stay open-minded, or should I say stay open-hearted. If this has resonated with you, then I urge you to not just go, oh, that was interesting, and forget about it. Um, you've been drawn to watch this. You've maybe at some point put out the call that there must be more to life than this or I want an easier way to live. I want to be more present. I want to experience fulfillment or peace or whatever. I want to be happier. Whatever call you put out, just trust that the answer is being offered to you and it's wise to accept it. So I did once. I put the call out and this is what I learned and um, I strongly urge uh, you to do uh, the same. Obviously, uh, I'm sharing this free uh, video uh, because I'm uh, encouraging you to do uh, the uh, come and join me and do some work with me. Um, I asked, had someone asked me a question earlier about where do we sign up or something like that. I don't know what they said, but uh, um, how, can, how, how we learn, uh, someone asked me earlier. And so... Um, one way you can learn is to join me for the Mind Body Calm online retreat. It's happening uh, in August um, 19th and 20th, uh, and there's going to be six live broadcasts. This is, um, and we're going to be sharing content like this over the two days, but we're going to dedicate two days to it. I'm going to teach you uh, to um, uh, meditate using the um, calm techniques. Uh, the calm meditation is for being consciously aware in life with meditation, C-A-L-M, calm. So calm is all about being consciously aware in life. In other words, you could say context aware in life with meditation. In fact, when I first came up with the name, it was actually context awareness, life meditation, but I changed it to, changed it to conscious awareness to make more sense for people. But essentially that is what the meditation technique is designed for, is to help you to become, to rediscover the um, context and to make it a habit to hang out attend with attention upon it as you engage your day uh, fully and freely. So um, you can either pay £108 to do the weekend retreat with me um, or you can join my Calm Clan uh, and you have to do that very soon. I'm going to take away that or join the Calm Clan membership thing in the next couple of days and it'll just be £108 if you haven't signed up. So do do that if you're planning to do that. Um, the Calm Clan is only £10.80 a month, so do the math. Um, if you join me, join this month and you and you and do this retreat, you basically get your first 10 months uh, for free because you haven't paid the 108 uh, quid uh, for the retreat, which is included in the price uh, for Calm members. So there you go. Um, if you are watching this after this has happened, then check out just sandyubing.com uh, where you can work with me one-on-one, uh, click on sessions, uh, you come to an event or a, re- a Mind Body Calm live retreat in person with me at uh, Champneys Resorts in the UK. Uh, so you want to do a live retreat weekend and we, we dive in uh, together in person. Um, or if you love this and you, and you go, oh my God, I, I want to do this and move forward even, even and, and share this message with other people, then that's why I have the Calm Academy. The very talk I've done with you tonight is one of the modules uh, from the Calm Academy Camologist uh, certification course. Just one of the modules, uh, and you, del- you, you get qualified to share this exactly what I've done with you tonight. Uh, you get qualified to share this with other people. I don't want to uh, keep this to myself. 
I've done everything I can. I'm doing everything I can in order, in order to um, get the message out there. And that's why I had the Cam Academy as well, because I don't want to do it on my own. I want to have a team and, and help us and get out there. Uh, so you're very welcome uh, to uh, join us. Uh, so I've just been shown, actually, it's live in months because your first month is free. That's very true, Linda. Thank you very much for saying that. So, um, yeah, sign up in the next couple of days um, or the offer will be gone and you'll pay 108 quid. It's still a bargain. The live version of this is over 500 pounds. So it's still amazing value uh, to get access to this. But do, do, do check out the CAM clan uh, where we have all the resources uh, in order to help you uh, become context aware. We have guided meditations, we have monthly broadcasts, weekly broadcasts, um, monthly workshops is what I meant to say. Um, we have guest experts, we have the complete Mind Calm online course, the complete Body Calm online course, the complete Mind Detox and Calm Cure online courses. Uh, we have the Comologist Foundation course, level one. There's so much in there, it's ridiculously cheap, and I'm constantly being told I need to put the price up, so get in now before I do, because I will honor the price for a while to the current members when the price inevitably has to go up at some point. Uh, so I hope you've enjoyed uh, this uh, workshop, uh, this webinar. I've certainly enjoyed uh, sharing it with you. Um, feel free to um, write me a little message if you have, and uh, if you did enjoy it, please feel free to share it, the webpage you're watching this on, uh, so that other people can benefit from it too. Um, this has been the um, Summer of Calm uh, webinar series, and I have been uh, Sandy uh, Newbigging, and I really have enjoyed uh, taking you through this content tonight. Hope you benefit from it, and I really look forward to uh, welcoming you to the uh, Mind Body Calm online retreat or a Mind Body Calm live retreat, working with you in person and seeing you inside uh, the Calm Clan or Calm Academy. So until we next speak, I wish you infinite peace, uh, limitless love, and bye for now, guys.